Good morning everybody and welcome back to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing. Happy deadline day to absolutely everyone that's watching and tuning in so far. Um, today, My name is Ryan McGinley and today I'm joined by Anthony Haggerty at a Haggerty 10 on the Twitter handle as he always says. Tony, how are you doing yes. this morning on this transfer deadline day, the morning after the Champions League group draw? I'm very well. No sleep for the wicked, Ryan. We're strapping myself in for a longest kind of day today because if you joined us yesterday we'll have informed you that we'll be back on tonight at 10 o'clock till midnight so we want your company we desperately crave your company for tonight as well so set your alarms whatever uh, come on but and if anybody wants to know what i'm wearing those who are regular viewers of the pod will know i'm a big roy the rovers fan so it's a original 1970s gola melchester rovers tracksuit in case they're thinking they're not celtic colors that's my other team fictional team roy the rovers <laughs> melchester rovers so yeah just clear that up before MD asks, but yeah, I wear it now and again, so all good. But yes, I'm good, Ryan. I've got down, I've climbed down off the ceiling from the excitement yesterday, both transfers and the Champions League draw. So looking forward to today, actually, as well. Yeah, it should be a, a busy day and a quite, quite a fun day as well, talking about all the transfers. I think um, this evening we'll talk about we'll talk more about transfers in depth, every transfer that's happened in the window. We'll maybe rank them, I don't know, maybe rank them or give them a, a, a rating so far as to what impact they've had. I know Celtic, there's some Celtic players that have just came in through the door, like two two days, three days maximum. So we can't really give them a ranking. It'd be more about potential or what potentially they could bring into the first team. But yeah, it should be a really exciting day. But before we get started and talk about today's morning topics, at least, if, if you are interested in what we do and want to support us even further, first of all, could I direct everybody to the subscribe button on the YouTube channel just below you on the, on the video? It really does help us. We're really trying to be make this a, a bigger platform for everybody the bigger the the bigger the subscribers the bigger the chat room and the more the more varying the opinions that can be in the chat room because i know how busy that can be especially when i'm on them briefing people are so used to coming in and and just having a blather for the for the duration of the the whole podcast which is always which is always good you know any viewers are good viewers and we really we really do appreciate that so if you do click on the the youtube subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified whenever so whenever the celtic we go live both in pre-recorded videos and in live streams and if you are interested in the website then please visit www.celticway.co.uk UK forward slash subscribe. We've we're all we're all we've always got stuff on there with whether that be scouting reports, um match match analysis, uh, uh, analysis from specific players on the games. We've got the press conferences. We we do our best to endeavor we endeavour to write up every single press conference that happens, whether that be player or manager, which means you don't need to even watch the video, you can just click on Click on the article and you'll be able to read through it all. I always find that's quite handy, especially when you're needing to find specific quotes. So you're not using that wee, that wee slider on YouTube that'll give you an advert every <laughs> two minutes as well. But yeah, if you are interested, then £4 for four months is the current offer that we're, we're giving out at the moment or providing at the moment. And if you visit www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, it would really help us a lot. Uh, from uh, On behalf of Tony and I, it would really help us with everything that we do. So if you are interested, then please give us a go and let us know what you think. So yeah, Tony, transfer deadline day. Uh, Celtic, we're, we're still, Celtic are still waiting to announce uh, a, a certain player, Paolo Bernardo from, from Benfica. Feels like we've seen this one before, deadline day, waiting for a Benfica player two years ago with Jota coming through the door. I know yesterday or the day before you were writing about how Paulo Bernardo could be the next superstar from Portugal. Do you believe that to be the case after maybe watching a wee bit more of him, seeing his highlights, clips? I'm just posing the question. You know, he obviously has got a lot to live up to. And someone sent me a DM and said, what about George Cadet? He was a superstar from Portugal. He certainly was. So, yeah, I, I, you just like them to be that kind of real deal, wouldn't you? You know, nobody knew much about Jota. I looked at his highlights clip. was told he was highly rated. And boy, what two years he gave us. And if it's the, a similar situation with Paolo Bernardo, then fine. But, you know, the, the recent history is good, isn't it? Got high hopes from Benfica have high hopes from, And high mm. hopes from that he can come over to Scotland and do it. And I'm, again, I'm quite excited about this one again. Uh, you know, I, I think this is what Celtic have done well the past few seasons using that loan option to buy, which I believe you've written about today, I'd written about it a wee bit with reference to Paolo Bernardo and Jota specifically. So I think that's the kind of model and the way forward as well. Get these young, hungry players 
with a point to prove. And I've said before, Celtic's a wonderful place if you want to come in and... Uh, I mean, Jota took his career stratospheric, didn't he? You know, and ended yeah. up with generational wealth. And if he wasn't going to move to Saudi Arabia, we would have got to move to a top European club, whether that was this summer or the following summer. I yeah. think it was a matter of time before Jota left the building. So, as I said, I think Celtic's a wonderful showcase for your talent. You can play in the Champions League. We spoke about it yesterday. Last, last year of six games in the Champions League, it will now go to eight games. You know, on the proviso, you win the title. You know, everything, there's a lot to entice young players who are are excellent talents, but maybe just not uh, make the grade at their first team. And there's no slight or shame in that. You know, so uh, I think it, it can be Celtic's advantage to use this kind of option, uh, loan to buy, option with, with players like Bernardo it was successful with Jota I mean you saw everybody on uh, tenterhooks who thought that Jota was coming back and uh, when it was finally announced I mean there was whooping and a hollering and a cheering all over all over parts of Scotland because Celtic fans were deliriously happy and uh, he gave them wonderful moments and he left with Celtic's blessing so you're hoping that that prototype is the model that Celtic are following with uh, regards to Bernardo. And I'm, I'm quite excited about Bernardo. You've said before, and we've agreed that see players coming in at 21, 22, 23, get that optimal two years when their career is going like that. And I've and they give their all for Celtic for however long they're there, help Celtic continue their domestic success and dominance and make an, an impression uh, in the top... Uh, you know, in the greatest club stage of all the Champions League, then it's a it's a winner winner for for everybody concerned, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think it's one of those examples. I use the, I I use that 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 sort of saying. You scratch your back, we we'll, yeah. we'll scratch yours. Basically, if uh, these players coming through the door, ages 21, 22, 23, Jota was a wee bit older. He was twenty two, going on twenty three when he joined the club. You know, he wasn't exactly a youngster, still a young player, but not not in terms. You couldn't really call him a wonder kid. People were calling him that two or three years yeah. previous when he was trying to make make the grade in, in Benfica's academy and then making sporadic appearances for the first team before he got his loan deal to valid the leave. But I think this guy, he's only 21 years old. He's, he's coming into the he's coming into a Celtic team. He's coming into a winning team as well, you know, a team that will really be possession heavy. I don't think he had that at Pacos de Ferreira. I know in the second half of last season, they did unfortunately get relegated. So it'll be a completely different mindset for him. Now all of a sudden, a team where draws might have been acceptable that draws or defeats and this it can either make or break young players I would say because some players can't get used to the that mentality of winning but at the same time you know he's been in and around Benfica ben, for Benfica second place is last place in the league it yeah. just so happens that there's three big boys in that league sometimes four when Braga are competing but you've got Sporting, Porto and Benfica it's a, it's a really really interesting league in that regard and it's full of talent as well so if you can't I, I know you were making the point it's no slight on it's no slight on Bernardo that he can't get into the Benfica squad you know a World Cup when I was in the Benfica squad till January and then yeah. and then he gets his move to Chelsea but playing in the same position so that's no slight on him you're more than good enough I, I think if you, if, if you show what you can do at Celtic then you're more than good enough the great thing about it is Ryan it's a wonderful academy that produces a Conveyor Absolutely. belt of players, right? A bit like Manchester City. Conveyor belt of young talent, players. And Celtic have to use that to their advantage in terms of loans and options to buy. Two, two of the best academies in world football, and you've got links to the two of them. You've, you've, you've conducted business with them and, and did it in a proper manner, and it's all very professional. So I think, uh, I think it's a wonderful kind of relationship that they have with these clubs. And uh, long may it continue, because you can, you can pluck uh, some some diamonds here, or certainly I would say rough diamonds in the phrase, but polish them up and send them on their way. Uh, you know, having you know shaved off those rough edges and made them into a player, uh, which which certainly happened in in Jota's case. So Bernardo, I'm very excited. I hope that they. I'm, I'm assuming they'll announce that today for. The medical's been done and all that kind of stuff. You're just assuming it's a matter of time. But 
I think yesterday and with all the Champions League draws as well, they all get lost in the vortex, didn't it? The kind of signings of, of Nat Phillips and and Lewis Palmer and stuff like that. You know, he came in overnight for the, but it's been kind of lost in that kind of Champions League draw. But the excitement is there now. I think, you know, you contrast the mood on Friday to the mood on Saturday afternoon, tea time. You know, it's night and day. And uh, we did predict that there would be a kind of reaction in terms of Celtic going into the market. Now everybody's saying, right, left back, striker, goalkeeper. You know, it's <laughs> just like <laughs> the demands keep on coming. And we don't know what Celtic are going to do. They're, they're certainly still very active. Uh, so here's hoping that they they do conduct more business or else the 10 o'clock to midnight show might be a damp squib. But hey, we'll... Uh, It'll never be you, a damp squib. Yeah, you, yeah you, you, you guys will keep us entertained and we'll try and keep you entertained. So even if it does turn out to be two hours of talking about the club that we love, it'll be brilliant. It'll be a great laugh. It'll be like a chat show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's hope exactly. the Celtic we, make it as less like a chat Yeah, correct. We just hope that they, and if they don't, so be it. We'll still be able to to talk about uh, the club that you love and, and certainly heading into Sunday. I think we're Celtic fans in general are heading into Sunday with a wee bit of purpose and you know, you know with that kind of uh, in their step. You know, they're kind of looking Renewed forward to. Yeah, they're, they're looking forward to the iBooks now, uh, but I was always looking forward to it, so there's a, a renewed vigour, there's, you know, they're, they're desperate now to see which which ones of the new players that have come in start you and I have nailed our colours to the mast Nat Phillips starts, Lewis Palmer starts got to, big, yeah. de- big decision in the midfield whether you go Bernardo home to water because you think that Callum McGregor and O'Reilly will be certain starters that's some less Celtic produce an absolute shocker and Flog O'Reilly, who's been linked with t- a ten million bid from Leeds, well booted into touch. So, uh, what yeah, game did so, you want him for? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What what leg and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, oh, so, that's. I think ten million is actually derisory. I hope they told them not to go that. Is, uh, yeah, it's derisory. So I think it was treated with the contempt it deserved. I don't think Celtic would entertain any th- any bids for a player of Matt O'Reilly's. Uh, calibre and talent at this late juncture so yeah so I, I think uh, as I say that Monday we were very positive and we were optimistic weren't we about Ibrooks. I'm even more so now that's no guarantee that Celtic are going to win but I certainly think they'll they'll put up a better showing and give a greater account of themselves than anyone thought they might uh, after the final whistle on Saturday so yeah, last Saturday. I mean, so we'll, uh, it remains to be seen. But yeah, I'm I'm happy. I'm happier. Let's put it that way, right? <laughs> happier. But there's always room for improvement, I would say. I know last night there was a, a couple of links with a player that Celtic had potentially been offered, Ryan Bertrand. Now, Ryan Bertrand hasn't played any football since December of 2021. 34 years old. Yes, he's another Champions League winner. What's like <laughs> Matt, uh, Nat Phillips? Even more so that he started that game against uh, uh, Bayern Munich back in 2011, 2012, around about that time. I think it might have been 2012, actually. The one where Didi Drogba scored the, the header and then uh, Chelsea won on penalties. It was a really good game uh, 10 or so years ago. Ryan Bertrand started in that game. I can't believe if you look back on that, he was basically 23, 24. I thought he was a 18, 19-year-old playing at that time, but it seems he was a bit older. And he made his debut, or I think it was one of his debuts, definitely his European debut in that game. Um, since then, he moved on. He's had quite a few England caps. He's he's played for Southampton. He moved to Leicester as a bit of a stopgap, but he hardly he hardly ever played for Brendan Rodgers on at Leicester. I think this is pretty much putting two and two together. Um, Thirty four <laughs> years old, injury injury doubt. He's been out for a long time with injury. I know he's back now, but. Yeah, I I think this one is a non starter. He was a good player five, six years ago, but I think it's a non starter. I'm laughing. Pete McGee's nailed it. Plastic Bertrand would be better than that's a Celtic Dar reference. It'll go shooting right over your head, Ryan. Yeah, you've just, me. Go, just Google Plastic Bertrand when you come off this uh, this briefing and uh, a song called Sampla Pumwa. You'll uh, 
you'll recognise it as soon as you hear it. Uh, so that made me laugh, Pete McGee, because yeah. That, but yeah, Google Plastic Bertrand when you come off Ryan, you'll 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 kill yourself laughing at the at the song. It's, it's, <laughs> you're giving me homework uh, for the weekend, Tony. I, I'm giving you homework. <laughs> I, I, oh no, uh, your mission if you choose to accept it. Uh, yeah, if Pete McGee, Sapla Pumwa. It's uh, a dreadful song, but it's it's dreadful in the sense that it's become a bit of a cult classic. So you'll 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 love it. Honestly, tremendous. You'll kill yourself laughing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was just anyway. I was just having a wee look. I was having a wee look on um on Twitter there because I did see a comment that popped up that was that Sky Sports re- were reporting that Bernardo's medical had been completed. I haven't seen that as of yet on my Twitter feed. You know, I've got all the notifications on, etc. But if that does happen in the next uh, however long we're on this morning briefing, then we'll endeavour to let you all know that that, that is that's happened and, and Bernardo is now officially at the club. But it's it's a watch this space. I think it's quite uh, were you wanting to talk about Bertrand before we before we go on to um well, I, I, I'm I'm Bernardo. with you, I I feel that there's people are connecting the wrong dots here, aren't they? And just yeah. because of the personalities together, and you know, so I'm I'm quite willing to leave that where it is. I think Pete McGee's right; he probably would be better off with Plastic Bertrand, you know, because I think at 34, it's not what uh, Celtic are after. And uh, if they are after a left back, I would want somebody younger and uh, that either fits the model or somebody that can come in straight away and play, you know, so um, and I think Celtic would be looking at that as well I know Brendan Rodgers said he wasn't averse to bringing in 26, 27 year olds if, the case, if there was a strong case for it but uh, Ryan Bertrand, as you say, 34 I think that ship has sailed hasn't it, in terms of uh, his, you Don't know. get me wrong five, five six years ago yeah, yeah, taking yeah. in a heartbeat and Brendan Rodgers first spell at the club. It, it it does remind me, and it does give me some similarities to remember when Danny Simpson was linked with Celtic as well, and was that sort of older yeah. fullback, yeah, um, yeah. and that was pretty much pie in the sky stuff. Good player, don't get me wrong, both really good players on their day. Um, I'm just... And and not, and I'm not uh, just just before that. Just, I'm not counting anybody out due to age because I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I recognise yeah. that Ashley Young is 38 and he's still playing fullback yeah. for Everton at the moment. You know. But not every player has the same body as Ashley Young. He is clearly a guy that really does take care <laughs> I'm, of himself. I'm just waiting on the is it Michael Cadlich and hacking yakking uh, <laughs> rumours. Ryan, you we know, don't talk about hacking after <laughs> last night. <laughs> we, were, we were always Celtic were always linked with those two, weren't they? Hacking mm-hmm. yakking and Michael Cad. It was always kind of your go-to players that were always coming. Oh. And uh, I think back in the day, Robert Prozinetsky was another one as well, wasn't it? And uh, Stoikovic, the kind of two great players that played for that wonderful Red Star Belgrade team uh, that mm-hmm. won the Champions League against Marseille. I thought that was uh, quite funny yesterday. The, um, Joe Cole not even attempting the proper <laughs> name yesterday. I think that was Shervinus one of the highlights. Vidza. <laughs> Red Star Belgrade, <laughs> nah. Even the even the guy who is, uh, is actually to you is uh, Claudio Ranieri's doppelganger. He was kind of uh, laughing, wasn't he? Because he, he corrected him and said, "Yes, I've seen you've gone for the the, the easier <laughs> uh, uh, pronunciation." He's like uh, Chir- FK Chervinus Vidza. <laughs> He's like yeah. yes, Red Star Belgrade. That was probably there was a there was lots of funny moments yesterday. The the saxophone player had me in stitches as well. I was like, really? I, mean, uh, I was really I, enjoying that. I, I, I I've got a saxophone, Ryan. I can't get a note out of it. My good wife bought me uh, it for my fortieth or forty fifth. I can't remember one of those birthdays. And uh, yeah, and I'm I said I would make it a point to get lessons. And want to play two tunes. One's pick up the pieces, the other's a pink panther. So if I can do that by the time I'm 51 now, so I have to make it a quest until <laughs> to do it. And at some point, if I ever learn it, I will play it live on the the, the morning mm-hmm. briefing. That that would be that'd be quite something, wouldn't it? But mm-hmm. yeah, uh, there's people are reluctant to teach it from scratch because it's a very mm-hmm. Difficult instrument to learn. So just bringing up, bringing up this comment. Um, just due to the fact that I want, I want to basically open and close this door. Yes, if Ibrahim Sadiq was available after putting in that performance against Aberdeen last night, then I think Celtic should be all over that. But at the same time, in his post-match interview, he did say that he was going to AZ Alkmaar in Holland. So that is pretty much finalised. Very, very honest post-match interview as well. You know, he was. 
he was keen to point out that, that that was his last game and that he was moving to AZ Alkmaar. But what a performance last night against Aberdeen. I, I know we don't want to talk yeah. about Aberdeen too much, but he, he was an absolute standout. And it just shows you these players are available. Um, I think he's a Guinean under-20 international. But he'll, he'll be making his debut for that uh, Guinean national team before long. He is a star. I've said before, Ryan, we should, Celtic should be all over, you know, uh, leagues like... Uh, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, and then you know the top clubs in those leagues should be able to sign their best players if they want to, you know. But mm-hmm. I've also said that in England, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, see the clubs from fourth down, you know, your Europa League qualifiers down to about tenth, should be able to you know be in the mix for their best players too. I, I'm sure they are, but I've always Standout sort of said players. That, aye, there's you know there's, you there's usually one or two. Yeah, you know, try to tell me that Celtic couldn't sign the best player at Real Betis, you know that kind of thing. And I, and I get that it's uh, the the hard thing is to sell on Scottish football and stuff like that. But if you're if you're saying you can provide them with champ a diet of Champions League football, you know, a majority of the time, or at least European football, a uh, majority of the time, then you go you go on hard on that. So I'm always sort of guys like. Ibrahim Sadiq should be on your radar, shouldn't he? If if you're doing your scouting properly. Um, it, it shouldn't take a game against a Scottish club to sort of unearth this guy and think, oh, he's great. And then for somebody to say, but he's signed for such and such. You know, I, clearly AZ Alkmaar, who are doing what I believe Celtic should be doing in scouting these leagues. You know, you should Good be scouting. able to do it. Good scouting. Yeah, you know, so I... I and like it's Celtic not, are not, trying to do that. I, yeah, I'm not having a go at Celtic scouting system because they're clearly doing stuff right. You just want it to be better and you want to be all over this before before it becomes a uh, common knowledge that this guy's a player, you know? So, uh, and I, I've always felt that like Scandinavia, and now I guess they're, uh, they're branched out because of what Anne said about Japanese markets and, you know, the Far East markets as well. So they're trying to get the best players from that league. And, and that... And that's brilliant, but I uh, I still think there's work to be done in terms of you no know, European European recruitment for for really good players. Uh, so and and I know that the money argument I get all that, but you should be at least in there competing, shouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I knew me, I knew there was a I knew there was a player that reminded me of that is exactly who he reminded me of last night. Raheem Sterling, very yeah. very similar in stature as well because he's I think he's only five foot six as well, but he's uh, very very quick on the ball. There was one point in particular where he just ran and intercepted the ball, but the speed and it was like watching Maeda honestly um, with the with the speed in which he got. Oh, no, he was, he was excellent last night. Yeah, I, I I saw quite a bit of the game and I thought he was excellent. He was a standout player, but so. You know, and this you'll be all over this as well. And I'll be, I believe that Roma are going to let all the soul back in go. Yeah, I want to see going to. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I mean, we said it at the time when he came from Celtic Park. And he shouldn't have been allowed out of class. Destroy you with both of them. Yeah, he should have been sat down and said, "Listen, just sign that." You know. Uh, Brilliant player. So, uh, again, you know, uh, uh, d- did we need him? I, th- I thought we did need him. I thought he was an excellent player. I thought he could, uh, he could, uh, what do you call it? He could, he, you know, he would have brought a lot to the table. So, it's, uh, you know, if he's going to Olympiacos, fine, but you should be in competing with Olympiacos for that kind of calibre of player. That's what I mean. Absolutely. I, you can't stop deals from happening if they've, uh, committed of future elsewhere, but surely Celtic should be in in the mix for a player like Saul Backen. Could afford a player like Saul Backen, even the fact that he's leaving Roma. That's what I mean. So, uh, if mo- if any more of those players come up, then I would love to see Celtic in the mix for these because that scouting uh, part of it has been, you know, you, you you did your due diligence on these kind of things. That that's all I'm talking about. So, and yeah. <laughs> Kaiser coming in, it's a great man once said, you've got to ask a question you know, these are persons of interest for me as a as a Celtic supporter looking on at the team and thinking what do we need you know, so uh, and again, uh, you trust the process with the scouting department but 
you know, the likes of Ibrahim and Saul Bakken, could you see them in a Celtic jersey? Of course you can, because they're good players. My mantra is always, see when you get good players in your team, you end up with a good team. It's funny, that, isn't it? It's, I just... Uh, Jigsaw pieces. Still rocky signs, is it? <laughs> it's like, and when you have good players in your team, you have further options, and you find a system and you cater it around all your good players. So that's a, uh, and and I think good managers do that. Elite level managers can do that, which we've argued to toss about that we have one. You know, so uh, yeah, and. It, and recruitment's all about signing good players, isn't it? But y- yeah. you and I, and certainly the Celtic Way uh, commenters and our faithful band, people that watch the show, they know a good player when they see one because they're a knowledgeable bunch, you know. And I, yeah, uh, that's why we 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 like their opinions on things because you know they they are around a lot of football as well. Throw up names that maybe you're not aware of yourself at times. And uh, I don't think anybody would disagree that uh, Celtic maybe missed a trick by not being around the likes of Saul Barkin and Sadiq. But uh, I'm still excited by the players that were brought in. Lewis Palmer, you you hope he can hit the ground running. Uh, Ibrooks on Sunday, as I've said, without giving too much away about where starting elevens, he's in mine. Mm-hmm. I think I think just back on on back on soul back and I don't mean that exactly, but yeah. I think if um, if those rumours were solidified with regard to the the Bodo Glimt manager Knutson, I wonder if that would have been one of his first signings. Just uh, just playing devil's advocate, if he what? knew that Ola soul backing was available, you know, it's putting two and two together. But I think Celtic what? would have went down that route if uh, Knutson uh, was the uh, was a Celtic manager. Yeah. He did what Ange did. He would have brought Saul back in and then I kind of cool. You, you bring, you bring in, yeah, you bring in you, what you know. You bring in your own troops, basically. You bring it's in the local, guys that know your system. Yeah, it's local knowledge, isn't it? Basically. Yeah, absolutely. And yet, and they become coaches on the pitch as well because they know how to play the style. And these are the guys that spread the message of the style to mm-hmm. others. So yeah, that's why you bring in your, your, your trusted lieutenants. You say, to you "Guys, right, these are my, these are my players, my guys. You know this. Teach the others." Yeah, uh, but I don't want to go down that route. I don't want to go down that route too much. It didn't happen, you know. Yeah. That was that was all. I don't. I think it was a bit of an own start to begin with. It seemed as if he was more interested in maybe the Ajax job, but that never happened either for him. But um, who who was it that I was going to speak about? I was going to speak. For, yeah, I was going to speak about the fact that with the transfer window being open for an extra hour tonight in Scotland, with regard to the English one closing at eleven, and then the Scotland one finishing at midnight. Do you think that gives Celtic scope to maybe assess the transfer market for an extra hour, see what what thing what deals are transpiring, and maybe get a late deal? That's what it's, happened with Carter Vickers two years ago. It's Celtic, of course they will. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, they've got forum for it, haven't they? But uh, certainly this week they've brought in players that you know you wanted a central defender, you wanted a, you, you were given another attacking option. You know, you've you've more or less got a midfielder. You're waiting for confirmation of that. Now, the dream scenario would be a left back, a goalkeeper, and a striker. And I don't think for a minute that Celtic maybe aren't working on something like that. But that might you might have to wait till January until that. You might get one of those three uh, if push comes to shove, and you know they're going right down to the wire to do business. What what you are hoping now that nobody leaves the building. I would seal all the exits and uh, just stop players from from leaving. I'm talking about first team players. I'm, I'm not talking about French players like Ajeti and McCarthy and Haksabanovic. Who Haksabanovic now? Yeah, that's, you know. So Haksabanovic, that, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, predicted by ourselves on Monday that I, I'd say they just wouldn't entertain that because you don't need that. The wall. Club, yeah, so. Or it was on Instagram, that was a problem. Yeah. Right, right, was on Instagram. Right, right was on Instagram. So, you know, so away you go. And uh, and I think that's a good thing. So you just cut ties with players like that. Uh, certainly for, for the interim, I know, I think it was, it was maybe a permanent deal in Greece, but now it's maybe a loan deal with Stoke. Probably a loan deal with an option to buy or make it permanent. I don't think Haxabana will kick another ball for Celtic, so, and I don't think he should. 
So that's my own take on that. So yeah, as long as guys like that are leaving the premises, but no first team, I reiterate, no first team stars have to leave, it, uh, should leave Hatate O'Reilly. The sign says don't walk, it's hands off. And I think Celtic should be just, don't care what's offered uh, in, 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 in the ensuing hours and the hours to come. You know, Celtic do not have time to replace uh, players of that quality with anybody else. So, I um, uh, you just reject everything that comes your way and you reassess in January while still trying to add some final bits of quality uh, of your own up until midnight, if possible. Yeah. You're, smir uh, uh, you're smirking there, Ryan. What's going on? And I'm just looking at the comments. I, I think we may have been infiltrated by another stream or something. But, um, <laughs> I, I can't complain. Any any viewers are good viewers. You know, we're, we're up to about 770 at the moment. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I was just looking at all the comments coming in. I, I didn't even know what was happening there. Um, but, yeah, I, I think with regard to the Haksabanovic um, move, I guess we'll, we'll find out that age-old question, can he do it on a cold Tuesday night in Stoke? Um, that, was always, <laughs> that was always the question that was posed to, to these players coming into the Premier League. I know they're in the Championship now, but I think Stoke are one of these teams that are trying to get back into the into the Premier League. They're a team that have been down in the Championship for a good number of years now. What is that? Must be about five, six years. Um, they've had a, a number of managers, currently managed by Alex Neal, who used to be the Hamilton manager, was also the... Um, was also the Sunderland manager in Preston as well, Norwich. He's, he's, he's been about down there, but he's currently the Stoke manager. So it'll be interesting to see how Haksabanovic does there. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he'll kick another ball for Celtic, I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. And I don't think he's got the uh, the work ethic to do so, or to work in a Rodgers team. I thought he looked a bit out of place in an Ange Postacoglu side. He just didn't have the... He didn't have the fitness to maybe do what was required. You know, you need to be a willing runner. And there was a reason why he was coming off the bench with 20 minutes to go. Yeah. As, as far as, um, I hope he does a good job down there. And, you know, he might be, he might need to do less, less running down there. He might be just be their out ball that they can put in. And, you know, he's got a good shot on him. But for the for the time being, I don't, I don't think he's got a, a future at Celtic. So I think when he does make that move... Hopefully, he does well enough to secure himself a permanent deal. Yeah, I mean, he, he goes. At, I don't say he goes with everybody's best wishes because I think everybody thought that uh, Instagram message on Sunday was a bit crass, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, unbecoming of a player who's not contributed a lot. You know, I always say players that have an inflated sense of their own worth. You know, it's all fine. It's no saying it. It's Dana, it, isn't it? That's the the Glasgow expression, isn't it? So, and Haksabanovic talked a good game, but didn't actually, mm -hmm. you know, play a good game. Yeah, I'm, uh, absolutely. Fighting fires all over the place here, Ryan. You're, you're doing, you're doing double duty here. I, 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 I really do appreciate um, yeah, that. Yeah. So, but there you go. I'm, I'm trying to get all the. I think it's bots, as somebody said. So. It must be. It must be bots because um, just, uh, I don't know how I'm people can be that uh, awake and alert to, to infiltrate <laughs> yeah. streams at twenty to eleven in the in the morning. But yeah, it's a. Uh, in terms of Haksabanovic, I think he. I think he, he. He won't kick another ball for Celtic. I think he'll be the only one that leaves today. You're hoping that maybe the a Yeti deal is. Is completed, then he can go to Turkey and restart his career. Don't have any ill feeling on the player whatsoever. I hope he does well over in Turkey and smashes it. He just had a torrid couple of years at Celtic. Yeah. He started well. I always, I always like to hear him like that or, or talk about the good, the good points, which was the start of his career. You know, he scored in his debut against Dundee United. Scored in a number of games in the lockdown season and the season that shall not be named, but I named it again. <laughs> but yeah, that injury, that hamstring injury, hamstrung him. Basically, yeah. he hamstrung his Celtic career because he was. I think he's one of these guys. He's one of these players that needs to constantly play. He needs to play every game and get into a rhythm. You take him out of the team for four or five weeks and bring him back in. He's not the same player. It'll take weeks to. It'll take weeks to get back into fitness. I remember when he was making his first appearances, like at Celtic Park, um, during the lockdown season, obviously. And he looked so raw and and so unfit almost. I, I think it was the. I think it was the KR Reykjavik game. That he played, I was like, my goodness, this guy's got a long way to go until he's at full fitness. But, yeah. he, but after that, he was scoring goals. It was that injury 
it was injury when he scored against Tibbs. I think he pulled something when he scored against Tibbs. He, he smashed the ball too hard and then he was out for four or five weeks by the time he came back. Celtic were in disarray. You know, they'd just been beaten against Rangers at Ibrox and, you know, the, the, the feeling around the club wasn't great at that point in time. But, yeah, he could never bring it back. He did have a wee bit of a, a tiny bit of a renaissance under um, Ange Postacoglu. He was the, the first captain in the pre-season game. I remember him wearing the captain's armband, which was quite mental when you yeah. think about it. And then he scored against Betis, led the line really well, but, you know, in and out of the team. And I wish him all the best for the future, yeah, you but it just didn't you, work. You never wished him ill will. You just want the guy to resurrect his career. <laughs> you know, and get and fulfil whatever potential he must have had to earn a deal with Celtic. He, he, he just kind of... It, it's sad because he just seemed to end up being a malingerer, didn't he? And I don't I don't wish to be disrespectful about that, but people didn't actually still realise that he was in the building. People thought he'd gone because he was just so far out of the picture, wasn't he? And it's not the player's fault. Yeah, he had injuries and, you know, I, I think... Uh, I think there was a goal scorer in there somewhere, but it was it was well hidden, wasn't it? It was in Basel, pretty much, you know, because that yeah, was the last so, time he was scoring. And uh, I just think he needs to get away from Celtic and call time on this chapter of his life and resurrect himself somewhere else. And I think the parting of the ways, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? And he's mm -hmm. just one of those players you look upon in an era of uh, kind of failure, you know, uh, certainly that, that season, and, you know, you look upon it like, kind of, he'll be up there with the likes of Cascarino, Carol Muggleton, mm -hmm. you know, these kind of guys, you know, when, when you when you think of certain players, you think of certain eras, or certain jerseys. Barkas Nayeti. Aye, you know, Barkas Nayeti will signify the season that shall not be named, won't they? Yeah. Shane Duffy, Duffy's possibly as well. Duffy's yeah, well. yeah, yeah you know, so <laughs> it's get it, and it's death by association, isn't it, really? So, And it's no slight, again, it's no slight on those players because they were good enough to play for Celtic much more than I'll ever do in my career. But That's some, happened, yeah, sometimes yeah. sometimes things don't work out. And you're not having a go per se, but, you know, players are brought to the club, uh, you know, in good faith. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And for the players that were listed, it, it, it didn't work out for all sorts of reasons. So... But you wish them all the best. I, I never wish anybody that leaves the club any ill will. They're leaving the club for a reason. So, you know, just didn't cut the mustard at Celtic and all the best wherever they go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, best wishes to Yeti. Wherever he goes in Turkey, I know there was two teams fighting it out for him. I, it seems as if one of them, I think, is, is going. Uh, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. I, tried, I pronounced it a couple of days ago. Was it Gazantuk? Or some something like oh, that yeah, in, yeah. In, the, in the super the super league. Um, I know that they play in the Turkish super league, so yeah, it should be a a, a yeah, good yeah. a good yeah, chance for them to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it should be a good uh, a good move for him to restart his career. You know, you're living in yeah. a, a it'll be difficult conditions to play in, that's for sure. But I, I hope he does cut the mustard over there and, uh, and and does a good job and gets his career back on track because you know. He never put in less than a hundred percent whenever he played for Celtic. That's that's got to be. I know that the way in which he looked and his his physicality and that it made him look as if maybe sometimes he wasn't putting in a hundred percent. But I've got no doubt that he was trying his, his hardest for Celtic when he whenever he pulled on the the shirt. And I always remember that game against Betis very fondly, even though yeah. Celtic lost that game. It was a turning point, and those players players after that game were talking about that game being a turning point because it showed what they could do in Europe under Postecoglou. Yeah. And, and yet he scored, I think it was twice in that game. So I, I don't think any player doesn't give their all for Celtic when, when they wear that jersey. Just some players are defined by certain errors when uh, it's not happening and the club's unsuccessful. And I think, as mm -hmm. I said, that, you know, we named some players there and, and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pity because you, you always want everybody to succeed that signs for the club, but it, it in an ideal world, that's what would happen, but uh, it didn't happen for a, for Albion Ayeti. And if he's going to Turkey, then good luck to him. Yeah, absolutely. Seems as if we've got the comments section sorted out as well. There's a, a severe lack of cat, <laughs> cats meowing, so that's that's quite good in that. Michael <laughs> Ross asking the biggest question of all, can you cut mustard? 
Don't know, maybe something that we I've never tried, tried Michael. Thing. Yeah, I've never tried, but uh, I was just kind of delving into the the expression. That is the expression, is it? Can cut the mustard. Yeah, you, I used that. I used uh, that. Yeah, cut yeah, the mustard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's something that I've heard previously. But yeah. yeah uh, thank, thank you, everyone. And we're not stopping just now. Still got another what 10, 15 minutes of this podcast to go. But we're currently sitting at seven hundred and ninety people watching. It's incredible. The, it's absolutely incredible. The, over the past two weeks, especially. The, the podcast is really starting to take off. We're getting around about double our viewers, which is absolutely incredible. Thank you very much to everybody that joins us in the comments section. We'll do our best to, to bring up as many comments as we can. But yeah, thank you very much to everybody. And just before we continue, that's a, that's quite a good segue into advertising the, the, the website. Uh, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Four pounds for four months. If you are interested, then please give us a try. Good content on there. Stats pieces, opinion pieces by myself and Tony. Um, instant match analysis, there'll be instant analysis from the game on Sunday, so if you sign, sign up just now, you'll be ready for that on Sunday when it drops roughly 5-10 minutes after the game we'll also be doing videos on the YouTube channel, which are really helping the channel at the moment and they're helping the, the website as a result of that if you are interested in keeping up to date with us, if you're new, if, if this is your first time watching the morning briefing please press the subscribe button, it really does help us in everything that we do and if you, if you click the notification button, it means that you'll get notified every time that the Celtic Way go live on the on, on YouTube. So if you are interested and you do want to help us out, then please press the subscribe button. Yeah, so I think today we'll probably hear Brendan Rogers talk to the media with regard to everything that's happened over the past week, with regard to training, um, the transfer window and the forthcoming game on Sunday. I've tried to not talk about it too much because I know we'll get into it in more detail tonight on the two-hour extravaganza, but... It's the, it is the other elephant in the room. There seems to be quite a, a herd of elephants in this room to talk about. But the other one, the other one is definitely the Rangers game on Sunday at Ibrox. Just um, I know we are feeling a wee bit more confident about it than what we were earlier on in the week. It's just due to a number of factors. Uh, but yeah, I, what are you expecting to hear from Brendan Rodgers? Are you expecting to hear a reinvigorated Brendan Rodgers now that he's got more players in the door? Are you expecting that? a change in tone, or do you think it'll be more of the same? I've always thought that he's uh, been pretty calm, regardless uh, of the results. You know, I, I thought he said a wonderful thing last week when he was asked about, you know, what he thought about the Rangers game, and he said, Rangers game's the easiest game. Now, he got it into the heads of the Celtic players right away. If I need to motivate you for this, you'll not be in my team. So I think he was looking for a reaction from the moment he said that, from the players coming into training, either the Sunday or the Monday, and then saying, right, let's get the finger out. And I've said, start working on shape, a style, and a formation that's going to you know, lead to success on Sunday. And so uh, I, uh, I've i been quite happy with the manager, regardless, even in, in defeat. I, I, you know, let's be honest, he's been hit with a horrendous injury list Right, he's been forced into uh, doing some late business, but as I said last week, he had to go to the board and say, "Look, I need to do some business here. You need to help me out." And the players that they've brought in, they're they're quite exciting, aren't they? And the logical players, aren't they? Not Phillips mm-hmm. in particular. So using your uh, own network of contacts, I spoke to you yesterday. I said there has to have been a phone call between Brendan and Jurgen Klopp, you know, who have you got for me? I've got this guy, mm. he, you know, that kind of thing. So you've got to use that, Ryan. You know, you've got to use all those tools at your disposal because I don't think he wants to go to Ibrox. You know, people were predicting that Celtic were going to get hammered last Saturday night and Sunday and Monday. And I, I see, I don't see any reason as to why they would think that was the case. Uh, only because it's part of your job and you you watch opposition. I'm not really interested in what Rangers do, but I'll ask people, have they watched Rangers play recently? Can they really tell me everything about Rangers and accentuate every positive they've got going that, were, that saw them say that they, were, that they are going to hammer Celtic, excuse me, or take a few off them? No. They might well do because Celtic are getting with I say a makeshift and I use that in 
kind of inverted commas side, but I certainly think Celtic, as I say, they're a little give a greater account of themselves than anybody thought possible at this point last Saturday after 0 0 with St. Johnson. Brendan Rodgers knows that as well. And these are the games he's back for. The six games that are coming up in the Champions League after the draw yesterday, and games like Ibrooks, which flick your managerial switch, where you go there and you say, <laughs> Right, first derby of the season, marker time. Regardless of what 11 you put out, you're dealt the hand you've got with injuries and all that. We get that. Two of our best players are missing Cameron Carter Vickers, Rio Atati. Fine, We've, we get it. You know, Nebrovsky is obviously injured as well. So, yeah, you know, odds are and stuff were stacking up against you, but the picture's certainly brighter. Isn't Absolutely. It? You know, and are you trying to tell me that looking on now, you and I as Celtic supporters, every Celtic supporter out there doesn't think that Rangers can be got at Ibrooks on Sunday? If you see if they don't, may as well not turn up. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I think they can be got it. And from Monday onwards, I was trying to say to people, you no, know, watch them and see. Well, they can be got it, and if you and I can see that, and I'm sure, I, and I get back to an elite level manager like Brendan Rogers can see that, and I'm sure that that's he's been working on that constantly. To what you think we've been busy, Ryan? He's been much busier than us. Let's week. hope he's got to work, yeah. He aye. will have not have slept, right? He will have got to work, and I'm not going to say that it's no guarantee of a result, but I'm confident that Celtic will play. A lot better than the, the showings that they put up against Kilmarnock and St. Johnston. I'm confident in that statement. And I think Sunday will be the time for Celtic to kick start their season and they'll come away with a positive result on Sunday. So uh, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm I might eat my words on that in the after show. Yeah, this is unbelievable, isn't it? That, the, the I've, I've tried. I've, I've tried. Oh no, it's, I know. I, I know. I just have. I've never seen anything like it. But we're just going to have to keep. Uh, I feel like like somebody who's got the, oh, in a sci-fi thing, just shooting aliens or something. You know what I mean? It's uh, that is happening. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, it's zap, um, zapping I've, I've actually. The I've, I've, I've had to turn the the comments off from. I think because it's it's just it's it's constant. Um, obviously bots that, that have a, a specific message. It's probably getting sent out from one or two accounts and then and then it's getting broadcast in tens yeah. of accounts at least. But yeah, I, I do agree with everything that you're saying. There is a renewed sense of optimism. Brendan Rogers will have been hard at work with all the with all the, the tactics and strategies that you'll be talking about before the, before the game, um, you were talking about Rio Hattati and Carter Vickers. Yes, they are two of our best players and you would love them. You desperately love them to be fit for Ibrox. They're two players that have come up trumps in games before at Ibrox, especially Carter Vickers that game two seasons ago. You you mentioned that. I know it was two years ago, but it's still, I think it's still very, um, I think it's still very relevant how, Colossus, a performance that was oh, yeah. between him and Starfield, and you just wish that a player like Navrovsky was available as well. And he pulled up in the last ten seconds of that Commander game. It's just so unfortunate. I know he can pull up at any point whatsoever, but you know to not have him about for the next two months while he was really getting acclimatised to the, the new team, and he was uh, alongside Lagerbielka, they were the two first team starters. The, the, Nat Phillips wouldn't have been at Celtic if not for Navrovsky's yeah. injury, I don't think. Yep. Even and, and even more so due to the fact that Stephen Welsh picked up a knock which turned out to be ligament damage on the day he signed his contract. How's that yeah. for luck? It's not even bad luck. We <laughs> talked about this last week. It's not even bad luck. It's no luck whatsoever because there's no consistency whatsoever. The only consistency seems to be that the players seem to get injured. Um, I don't know what that's down to. Is it down to the training? Is it just down to bad luck? It maybe it could be a, a a mixture of both put together. But you you would be hoping that Celtic have their eye on that for any more. And it seems as if they have stopped, or or at least for now, a touch wood, obviously. But there's not as many injuries um, or new injuries. Celtic know what they're dealing with over the next couple of months. Fingers crossed it stays that way. And you're talking about more players incoming into the team through injury than outgoing because of injury. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely it's one of those ones. Just in, I know we'll talk more at, um, on, on 
tonight's show, tonight's extravaganza show, which is what well, we've got cats and dogs now on the stream. <laughs> it's uh, it's raining but, cats and dogs. Every, we're raining uh, we're, we're everything to all men and women. Listen, I hope the the chat hasn't spoiled your enjoyment, guys. I've tried to zap as many of the bots as I can. It's like you're and you're kind of dodging the fact that you don't want to zap anybody who's a regular contributor and ban them. So it's a uh, I don't know what's happening here, but hope it's not spoiling your enjoyment. We will continue to just uh, zap them and talk yeah. as we normally do. But it is quite, it can be off putting, can't it? I mean, it's, it's off putting, especially const- when you're trying to get people um, in constant. the comments as well. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. I don't know what's happening here. Something's happened. But as I say, we, we are endeavouring to sort it out and make sure that the they go to whence they came. So, don't know how this happens. I'm not that tech savvy, Ryan. Well, I'm okay, but yeah, I'm constantly, but I'm I'm constantly watching the viewer count because if it goes down substantially, then I think that will mean all the bots are away. So it, it seems that there are a few people. I hope that's not real people that are leaving because of the bots. If that is the case, then we do apologise. But yeah, it's a. It's not an ideal situation, but we are trying to talk about Celtic on the um, in response to that. Just um, I'm trying to think if there's. I, I did see a, a a story coming up there saying that Albion Ayeti has arrived in Turkey and he's finalising his move to to that Turkish team. So well, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if that goes ahead in the last window. It's the end of an era for Albion Ayeti. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any other players that Sorrow. We we. Did we speak about Sorrel earlier on in the week? We spoke he about Sorrel. He hasn't actually yeah. left so He actually hasn't no. left. He no. has uh, his move fell through, so he is still at the club. Um, and neither is still... James McCarthy either. Has he He's been given told he can find another club? So Yeah, absolutely. It's uh it's an unfortunate situation for James McCarthy. Two seasons ago when he came into the club, I, I tweeted out saying a fit and fire in James McCarthy will walk the league. That you know, yeah. and I still do maintain that that would have been the case if you got the player that Everton had. It was that double leg break that effectively finished him as a top yeah. level player. He was a bit part player for, for Crystal Palace coming on and doing a job. The, um, it was more James McCarthy that got a game for Crystal Palace than McCarthy. Yeah. Always thought that McCarthy was the better player out of the two by some distance, but McCarthy didn't pick up the same injuries that McCarthy did, and that's that's what's led to him having a bit of a lesser career in terms of appearances made. Uh, it's, it's very, very unfortunate. Uh, he's, a, he's a Celtic supporter as well. You, you always want to see Celtic supporters and the team do well, but it just has not worked out for him. Whatsoever, I remember watching him when he came on for his debut. I was like, "This guy just does not suit the way that Ange Postecoglou plays." And you know, I don't think he's got the physicality required for Rogers style of play. I don't even think he's made a bench. He's not even made a bench under no. Brendan Rogers. So the writing is very much on the wall for his Celtic career as well. You're just hoping that maybe both sides can, both his sides, his representatives, and the club can come, can come together and make a have a resolution or make a um, or make a bit of an agreement to put to pay off because at the end of the day it's wages that could be getting used somewhere else for somebody that's actually playing in the side unfortunate but you know that's the way the cookie crumbles I guess for some yeah I mean as I say sometimes it works for uh, players sometimes it doesn't you know that's it is what it is you know sorry I mean this is just getting beyond a joke isn't it (laughs) yeah you know it's it's really annoying Uh, yeah. See, I have no idea how so many have been able to infiltrate the comment section, but it's just hopefully, it's, it's, hopefully it's not the same thing. Well, I hope it's not spoiling people's enjoyment. We will always talk about Celtic, but it's uh, your eyes constantly diverted to the comments, isn't it? You know, so and I'm trying to troubleshoot as we go along. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll endeavour to get to the bottom of that if we can. Uh, with our tech people once we come off the, the briefing. But yeah, I mean, we will speak about the Rangers game more tonight. We'll, we'll get some comments about that as well. But every time I've tried to comment today, I'll, I'll flick up a comment. I've been infiltrated with all sorts of nonsense. So uh, Stevie Boy saying it's an attack, Tony, so we need to get our boys on it. Yeah, I think, he, I think it is, because I've never seen as many comments like that in my life, right? Or as many bots as that. So it's uh, 
this is aye, it's not good, is it? It's um, it's not good whatsoever. It's it's difficult to even talk about Celtic. And you're trying to bring in as many comments as you can, and and you're not able to do so. So, I think with five five minutes to go until the hour mark, we we'll probably just call it a day at that because it is it's a bit untenable in this situation but we do thank everybody for for sticking with us and sticking with the the podcast we will do our best to make up for that lost time or or lost comments in tonight's show in the 10 o'clock show so please make sure you are involved in tonight's show at 10 o'clock 10 o'clock till 12 we're doing a deadline day special hopefully with uh, far, far fewer cats than this time around. <laughs> and dogs. And we'll get involved, guys, because we'll, uh, we'll have two hours to fill and I might even regale you with some <laughs> stories from these as well. <laughs> so we'll get the book as well. If we've got time, yeah. <laughs> some that you've heard, some that you might not have heard, maybe try and have a laugh and, and have a, a carry on in that. But yeah, uh, 10 o'clock tonight, guys. We'll be back on. Uh, we'll talk everything Celtic. Hopefully, Celtic can conclude even more business transfer deadline day today. Obviously, uh, we'll away and try and get our tech guys on the bot. Uh, what, what do they call it? Bot gate, isn't it? Everything's a gate, isn't it? So, we'll try and get our tech guys on bot gate, uh, and hopefully, everything <laughs> will be sorted for gate. tonight. Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. But yeah. thanks, but guys. You, thanks. It, Over eight hundred, just incredible numbers. Uh, for the, the daily morning briefing and we, and we thank you all very much yeah absolutely um, and if anybody is interested in what we do then please subscribe to the YouTube channel we'll be live at 10 o'clock tonight to do a transfer special and if you are interested in looking at the Celtic Way website then please visit www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe um, this is a nightmare um, <laughs> but yeah uh, four pounds for four months and if you if you are interested then please give us a subscribe until then and guys thank you very much for joining us apologies for the inconvenience with regards to uh, both noises and bots in, in the background both in the chat and in the background of the the audio and we'll see you all tonight for the transfer extravaganza special cheers guys look forward to that